This is LXPN TV, and I'm Colin O'Keefe. Earlier this week, the Federal Trade Commission announced that it settled with information broker Spokio for $800,000 after allegations the company violated the Fair Credit Reporting Act. To explain the case and what companies can learn from it, we bring in Christopher Leffler, attorney in Kelly Dry's Washington, D.C. office and author on the firm's blog, Ad Law Access. So, Christopher, first off, who exactly is Spokio and what did they do to draw the attention and the ire of the FTC? Sure. It's a good question because they, they exist in kind of a unique space. Uh, at the end of the day, Spokio really is a data broker for the most part. They, they collect large amounts of information about consumers. Uh, it's going to be, they collect from hundreds of sources, both online and offline, things like age, name, address, marital status, but also things about ethnicity, uh, hobbies, uh, religious uh, approaches, um, all that information, and they package it up. And then what uh, Spokio was actually doing was they were making that available to uh, HR professionals and recruiters selling that information. Um, so the FTC, obviously, they, they took a look at that, and they, they alleged that the, the, that collection of data, when packaged up and sold to HR professionals in that manner, actually became a consumer report. And so then Spokio was a consumer reporting agency, uh, thus triggering the Fair Credit Reporting Act. Interesting. So, so what are the specific allegations against Spokio, and, and what penalties will they be facing? Absolutely. So Spokio, uh, it's actually two different um, packages of allegations, if you will, that the FTC brought in its complaint, uh, both allegations of violating the Fair Credit Reporting Act, as well as allegations of violating Section 5 of the FTC Act. And I'll kind of take those two separately and break them down a little bit. So as I mentioned, the, the package of data would be considered a consumer report under the Fair Credit Reporting Act, or, or FICRA. Uh, and then, by proxy, Spokio became a consumer reporting agency when they sold it. Uh, the concerns that the FTC alleged was that, that Spokio failed to make the data uh, only available for legally permissible purposes, and that they didn't ensure that it was used, uh, it, that the accurate information was used, as well as failing to make sure that the, the companies that bought the data from Spokio provided uh, and complied with the appropriate types of notice and use obligations. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, at the end of the day, obviously, they, they allege violations of the Fair Credit Reporting Act. Uh, and then similarly, for Section 5 of the FTC Act, that was based on Spokio's website. They had put up uh, endorsements about their services. Typically, when endorsements are up there, we assume they're from third-party services. That's the default. Uh, it turns out that these endorsements had been provided by employees of Spokio, and there wasn't appropriate disclosures for that. So it, it ran afoul of the FTC's endorsement and testimonial guides, uh, which is enforced under Section 5. So, so at the end of the day, you know, it, uh, you know, of course, it's a settlement. Spokio is not uh, uh, identified or agreed that any wrongdoing has occurred, but they have agreed to settle the claims as you mentioned, $800,000 in a civil penalty for the Fair Credit Reporting Act violations. The FTC Act violations don't actually carry a civil penalty, um, and so there's no monetary uh, penalties associated with that. But notably, there's injunctive relief that goes along with the settlement, um, and Spokio is now under order. So in the, the injunctive relief prohibits them from future violations of these same laws, and if Spokio ultimately ever did violate a law or violate a provision of the order, they could be subject to civil penalties for violating the order, which are at $16,000 per violation. I see. That's, that's funny. I mean, not just getting in trouble for their basic business practices, but the FTC kind of, uh, not just, not sticking it to them, but catching them up on things like testimonials as well. Um, but, but finally, what can other companies learn from this incident? You know, not just one similar to Spokio, but regular businesses. Should they stay away from products like this? Sure. It's a great, you know, kind of a learning point for a lot of businesses. First, I'll take kind of the Spokio example. So if you are in that line of business, I think it's important for companies to take a, a look at the data packages that they're maybe collecting and sharing, selling, and see, you know, does this possibly trigger the Fair Credit Reporting Act? It's amazing how yeah, that evaluation doesn't always come into play uh, because they just think, oh, we're not in that line of business. We're not a credit business. But it can trigger based on other things under the Fair Credit Reporting Act. But again, for, for businesses that aren't in that line of business, right, so I'm just a, a company and I'm uh, purchasing data from a third party, they also should take a look at the packages of data they're receiving and take a look to see if reasonably that data is a consumer report uh, because they would have obligations under the Fair Credit Reporting Act 
just as the third party user that's buying that that pile of data. Mm-hmm. So that obviously both both sides they want to make sure they're not running afoul of the Fair Credit Reporting Act and complying with notice obligations that go along with it. Interesting. Interesting. Well, this is a yeah, an interesting case. You know, I'd seen Spokio kind of around, but you know, in today's times when there's so much focus, you know, from a number of parties, you know, the FTC and then now uh, the NLRB, of course, trying to be careful of what type of information is provided to uh, employers and employers of potential employees. So it's an interesting case to take a look at. Well, once again, that was Christopher Leffler of Kelly Dry and the firm's blog, Ad Law Access. For more on this story, be sure to check out their publication. It's at adlawaccess.com. And also, we have a ton of commentary on lxvn.lexblog.com, where you can also find more at LXVN TV interviews as well. Thanks, Christopher. Thank you.